Hi, I'm Jonathan Downey, founder and CEO of Airware, and I have with me today Lucas Van Ostrom, who is the co-founder and CTO of Aerialtronics. Aerialtronics is a company in the Netherlands building commercial drones for a variety of different applications. And in 2015, they'll be looking to expand into the United States and set up operations here. Welcome, Lucas. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. Could you give me a little bit of your background and how you came to start Aerialtronics? Yeah, actually, it started when I was already you know, a young guy. I was always very interested in technology. You know, know, I wanted to know how systems work. So I was, I was always very interested in a combination of, 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 of software and the hardware. So when I actually um, came in contact with my uh, partner, Robin, I was one of the first guys who flew actually, like say, drones, multi-rotor systems in the, in the Netherlands. He was taking, uh, he was making movies for people. We thought, well, you know, filming is nice, but there are so many applications that these things uh, could work for. So uh, yeah, Absolutely. that's how I joined. And how is Aerialtronics different than many of the other companies in the drone space? Aerialtronics provides a full solution. You know, we get in in consultancy all the way to the training, the selection of the vehicle, the payload, the software. You know, companies that come to us um, are not interested in a flying vehicle. You know, if you need a flying vehicle, um, yeah, you can buy some of uh, Amazon, you know, and you have some fun taking pictures of your house. But if you are running your business, you're interested in a question. Uh, you have a question or a problem that you want to have solved. Um, so what we do, we actually provide a solution for the problem some of these companies have. You guys make two different multi-rotor vehicles, a lightweight one and a one capable of lifting pretty heavy payloads. How are the two different vehicles used for different applications? Like a ATX-4, a quadcopter, is more for the endurance. Mm -hmm. So um, you, and, and in a more low risk uh, environments. And how uh, long does that fly? It uh, flies up to 45 uh, minutes, depending on the payload, obviously. Wow. So and you have then the, the ATX-8, um, which flies up to 30, 35 minutes, depending on payload, um, which is much more capable of handling strong winds, uh, lifting payloads up to uh, uh, 10 pounds. Uh, What's an example 10-pound payload that people are flying? Very heavy multispectral cameras um, for, for power line inspections, for example or lidars, yeah, you know, for in construction. And, you know, my belief is that these payloads will get lighter, but at this moment, they're, yeah, they're still bulky and heavy. What are some of the reasons that you really need a kind of commercial grade system to address many of these applications? I think the consumer grade drones did a great job in, you know, opening up the market. But then when you start depending on systems, you want systems that are robust, that are safe, you know, built to various safety standards and are easy to use in daily use. We're definitely in agreement. Drones are, are great tools to get at um, data and information that maybe previously was collected in a way that was dangerous or challenging or yeah. just impossible to get to. Could you give us an example of how you've seen that with one of your customers? Yeah, for example, in the cell tower inspection. You know, a report came out early this year that the last couple of years, uh, more than 100 people died doing cell tower inspections. Wow. Yeah, so that's, that's you know, from a risk base, it's, and how are these people doing these inspections today? Well, they're climbing in, in these masts, you know, using, some, using rope axes, and these guys are climbing the towers, and, and yeah, it can be very dangerous. Um, what we've seen uh, in Europe, for example, where uh, we did a, uh, a trial with uh, T-Mobile, um, you have a large soccer stadium there, and um, it, it has uh, a couple of these antennas all around the stadium. Normally, uh, it would take them two to three weeks with a cherry picker to check each individual uh, one of these systems. Uh, we were in and out in three hours. Wow, so, using one of your drones. Yeah, using one of our drones. And so, so that shows, shows you also the efficiency. Mm -hmm. So it's very effective and, it's, and, it, and it makes it life a lot safer for the guys that are doing the inspections. Yeah. So what's the craziest thing that you've had a customer ask you to use a drone for? Well, there are many questions. You know, people call you up for all kinds of stuff. Uh, we had, for example, uh, in Antwerp, there's a huge exchange for diamonds. And these guys are transporting their diamonds, you know, through the streets, five uh, miles out to an airport, you know, to, to, to fly them in and fly them out. And uh, we got a call from this diamond exchange and they said, can we just fly them? And he said, it's two kilograms of diamonds. Can we just <laughs> fly them out of the uh, diamond exchange? Now, it, the funny part is a lot of people are actually, you know, thinking in all kinds of different ways and a lot of things that we haven't envisioned. Um, we got a call from a sheik from the Middle East that he wants to train his falcons with drones. 
if we could make a, f a drone that looks like uh, a falcon. No, yeah, like a pigeon or something, okay. you know, that this falcon can attack. So there's so many different uh, requests. And, um, and that's also very nice, you know, people uh, everywhere you, where you come with, these, uh, with this technology, um, yeah, people get new ideas yeah. and uh, new, see new possibilities. How is the Netherlands embracing drones today? So actually, what you, what you see, in, 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 it's, it's similar as in the US. You know, the companies are embracing it. Mm. Uh, legislation is always running behind. In Europe, you have a lot of company, uh, countries now that, nowadays that have proper legislation in place uh, where the markets are really taking off. Okay. Um, in the Netherlands, it's still, yeah, um, we're waiting on legislation for a bill to come out in the Netherlands as well, same as here in the US. Yeah, on paper, it's forbidden to fly uh, drones commercially. Um, but if you want to fly them, you can get an exemption. Uh, and with that exemption, uh, you know, it, they require you to have your pilot's license, but it's a drone pilot's license. It's very specific for the drone. So they don't require you to have a commercial pilot license or something else. In order to build a business um, a case out of this, you, you know, you need your, the users of drones to be safe. Part of it you can do by technology. The other part is uh, training people. And you guys are planning on expanding into the United States in 2015. What was it about the U.S. market that attracted you? Well, the U.S. market is a very big you know, market. If you look at the, some of the numbers, um, you have more than 800,000 cell towers that all need inspection. Yeah. You have um, 160 million uh, utility poles. Mm -hmm. So these wooden poles that are all around your country, they need inspection as well. Um, and you have, um, well, if I look at uh, agriculture, for example, uh, more than 900 million acres of farmland. These numbers add up, and then when we see that, we see huge possibilities for these systems to be used. Well, Lucas, thank you so much for joining us here today at Airware. Thank you, Jonathan. It was great fun.